Hi there, I'm Mike Mike 37 and today I'm going to be showing you how to make an interactive NPC. That'll involve creating a new creature, using the conversation editor, and I'll show you how to get them working in a brand new module so that you can test them in-game. Later on I'll show you how to add a new plot to store information for your character, assign a very simple script to give things like rewards, and also record and assign voiceover to the conversation and add face effects to give that lip sync. Okay, first thing you should do is make sure that your string ID range is not going to conflict with anyone else. If you're uh, in entering into the community contest, character contest, we have um, string ranges that you can reserve for yourself. So just go to the character contest page and uh, look for the link to the string uh, ID ranges and uh, put your name next to one of these ranges. Uh, and uh, you can do that just by hitting edit if you're logged into the site. Um, then once you've got that range, uh, copy that so that you've got it to your clipboard and you can make ourselves a new module. So File, Manage Modules, New. Here I'm going to paste in the ID range next to String ID Begin, End, and Last Used. And I'll just change my end to whatever it was on that you reserved, so I think it was 3999. The name is the thing that the module comes up as, so I'll call it um, Video Tutorial um, NPC. And my unique ID, I'm going to call it VT NPC. Uh, that's the folder name that will go into your add-ins folder. Uh, starting area and waypoint, we'll have to add those later, we'll come back to those. So click OK and uh, make sure you hit open, otherwise you uh, won't actually be inside of your module yet. OK, so let's make ourselves our, our character. File, new, creature. The resource name, make sure it's something useful to you and I'll call him um, uh, tutorial NPC. Click OK. And we have ourselves a naked man with lots of little options to go through. So I'm just going to go through them very quickly one by one. Um, character is not actually something that's uh, used uh, in the game, so we'll ignore that field for now. Class is important. And the three you really want to choose from are, are warrior, wizard, um, and rogue. Comments can be useful for, for other people using it, but again, it's not used in game. Conversation, now we'll be setting that later, but because we haven't actually made our conversation yet, we'll come back to that. Um, copper, you can ignore. Description, again, you can ignore. Um, gender, obviously, if you want to change to female, then, then you've got the drop down there. Um, group is something used uh, for um, sort of hostility and that kind of thing, so you can make them, make them hostile depending on, on what group you assign them to. Don't need to worry about that too much. Uh, interactive, you want that to be true, that's fine. Inventory, this is where we can give them some clothes, so we'll do that now. Click on the little ellipsis button. We'll be using something from Global. A lot of the uh, things you want to give are in Global. We'll be giving them some chest armor, something, some studded armor or something like that. Um, so yeah, we'll add that to his inventory and we'll also give him some boots. Um, some leather boots to match. Now they're not by default equipped, but we do want to equip those, so in the slot section, drop that down and depending on what the item is, it will give you a different uh, place to equip it. So chest and boots. Um, other useful fields are droppable and stealable, so sometimes you might want to tick those. So let's click OK now. The name, this is uh, the name that the player sees in the game. So we'll call him um, Mr. Testman. Um, ordinarily not in caps, but uh, he's a pretty dramatic guy, so he's going to be in capital letters right now. Um, that'll always set itself to true. You can ignore that perception range, uh, plot giver. Even if it does give you um, quests and things, you can just leave that as false. Race. Now the race itself, um, you might, if you if you want to make a, an elf or something, uh, change that and think, well, hang on a minute, he's not changing his appearance in any way. This is just for the uh, for the rules. So if you like, I'll leave that in elf, um, and I'll show you how to change his actual appearance in a moment. Uh, tag. Try and keep this the same as the resource team. You can ignore. Um, Always leave the variables 2DA uh, at default unless you you know otherwise. And the variables, there's a whole load of um, sort of stuff that might be useful if you're into more complicated stuff, but uh, for now we'll just be ignoring them. Okay, abilities. Now, um, you can assign all the abilities you want here, but they won't actually do anything unless the AI tells them to. And for that reason, it's usually a good idea to rely on packages, um, which we'll set a little bit further down. Um, so you can give them stuff here, uh, but on the whole you don't really need to. Um, that does not mean that they will have no abilities, and that's an important distinction to make. If you use a package, the package will give them abilities which will scale. Um, 
If, however, you want to force certain abilities on them, you can you can set those there. Um, again, AI is another thing. Unless you know better, leave it at creature core is fine. Okay, so let's now set him to be an elf. This is under the appearance tab. Um, there are a lot of different appearances you can choose from. I won't I won't show you all of them. Something to note is his face will disappear. Um, we haven't actually set his head yet, which uh, we'll do now. All of these pretty much you can ignore right the way down to uh, head morph, which is the important one. If you've made a head morph for yourself and you've exported it, and you should see it in this um, selection here. Um, but by default, they'll come up with only the elven male ones, which is em underscore. If you want to see more of them, um, you can change this drop down to show you everything. But of course, if you've got an elf male character, you probably want an elf male face. Um, otherwise things go a bit, a bit wrong. So let's use this Nelleros, whatever he looks like. Okay, so there he is, Nelleros. Look at him. Lovely. Um, that's just a default one that comes with it. And you'll notice that it actually greys out most of these. So if you're using a, a head morph, which you should be, then uh, none of these other options really matter. So general package type. Um, that, on the whole, you can leave as none um, because it usually doesn't fit into any of those other ones and you want to give him, this is the important one, a package. Uh, depending on what kind of character you want to make, this is uh, how they decide when you scale um, the creature up um, which abilities they get. So we'll go with um, um, an elf dual wielder, I don't really know what he comes with, but you don't have to assign it to uh, your, your race. So in fact let's just pick uh, generic dual weapons. And package AI Usually you only get one choice, so we'll be using an AI which matches this. This just says that um, the AI will try and use abilities that are already in that package. So now he's set to be used at, at any level, so he should be should be fine for that. Um, and if you want to make him a tougher fight, you can um, you can set a harder rank. We'll use Lieutenant for now, which is about the ability of a, a player, of uh, uh, like a follower. Um, Treasure, treasure category, if you don't want him to drop stuff at random then don't set anything there um, but if you do want to drop random stuff then you might want to set a, a treasure category. Okay that's about all there is for now, these special ones we don't don't usually touch um, so let's just save that. Um, that's our, our NPC kind of done really um, so let's make our conversation. File, new, conversation, you can and I normally do right click in this, this window here but it's, it's going to go off the screen if I do that um, so resource name, it's a good idea to try and name it after the creature tutorial NPC. So you can name it even exactly the same because they've got a different extension it, it won't like have any problems um, overriding it or anything. So you can see it's a DLG dialogue. So the first thing we're going to do is um, right click and insert line. Now I'm going to make a note of this um, shortcut because I'll be using a lot. Um, insert line, insert line after are control A and control shift A. So I'll be using those and I'll probably tell you, try and tell you when I use them. So this is the first thing that the NPC says to the player. Now, for reasons I'll explain later, I'm just going to add a comment. Um, so I'm just going to call it comment here. Um, so I'll, co I'll come back to why I've done that. And I've used control A to add a line after that. And this is what the player says. Um, and I want, I want just to continue. Okay. If you've got a comment without any, any text and then a continue, the game will skip straight through it to the next thing. So it's useful to use these comments to, to break up your conversations. Um, now now we're on to actually what the, the NPC really does say. And uh, let's say something like, um, not seen you before. Okay. Um, now obviously this is a line that we don't want to say every time. And I'll show you how you can prevent it from, from being said every time. And uh, if we just now add in uh, another line, um, this is what the player responds with. So uh, the owner is the person you're speaking to um, and is shown in red and the blue lines are the, are the ones that the player gets to choose. So let's give the player the response uh, I'm new. So uh, we're going to start off by I'll, I'll show you a, a kind of merchant style dialogue and he's going to say uh, how can I help you? Um, and the player's going to say uh, I'd like to see your words and he's going to say sure and it's going to be end dialogue. Now unless you actually type anything on an end dialogue um, they they don't show anything so what we're going to do is we're going to say end dialogue um, we're going to spell it right though there we go <laughs> um, if you're using actions or descriptions it's a good idea to use um, the, the act and um, 
slash act or description um, things, that just puts it in brackets and in italics, which is a sort of DA convention if you're doing an action and not actually saying the words end dialogue, then uh, showing it in brackets makes it a bit clearer. Okay, now I mentioned before that we don't want to say this line every time. There's a really easy way to do this. If you just go to uh, plots and scripting and line settings visibility, if you change that to uh, only show once per game, that will prevent it from showing every time. Now, if you think about this through though, if this line is only being said once in the whole game, then so are these. Um, so the way we do that is I'll drag this now out, and you can drag any line and it won't change the idea of the line, um, to the continue. Now you'll notice at this point, um, after the continue, the, the M MPC has two lines to say. Now he will always choose the top one if he can. Uh, because we haven't got any, any conditions except for the only show once per game, um, it will always show this first one. But as soon as it's played once per game, this line will no longer be be uh, available for the game to use, and it'll jump to the next one. And it'll say, "Okay, how can I help you?" But we've gone and broken broken this line here. There's no ending to it. So what we do is we want to say this anyway, so we can copy it. So right click, copy, or use Control and C. Right click. Now we can just paste it normally. That'll create new instances of the same line. But because we always want to be be using that same line and we don't want to be changing it, we're going to use paste as link. Now if you use paste as link, the line shows up in grey, and you'll notice that all of the other branches that follow on from it aren't shown. The reason for that is as soon as it sees it as a link, it just jumps straight to this line. So it carries on from here. This means that I can carry on editing this lot here, and it'll always be changed to this. Okay, so that's a, a real simple dialogue um, on the go. I think it's about time we showed you how to actually test this in the game. So, let's make ourselves a new area. Go to the Areas tab. Um, uh, file New Area. Um, and I'll be calling Start Area. Okay. You'll be shown a plain blank, uh, black screen, um, which means that there's no area, uh, layout selected. So we just come down to this Area Layout click the uh, ellipsis and choose a layout. Now I just happen to know that Arena is a nice small one so I'll be using that one. You can have a browse through to see which, which layouts you like the best. Um, but this one will do fine for me. We want to uh, insert a waypoint. The reason for this is it means we know where to start the game. And you'll give your waypoint a tag so that you know what to um, use when, uh, when defining your starting uh, waypoint. So we'll be calling it waypoint start, wp underscore start and let's add our creature. Um, now we haven't quite hooked up the uh, conversation yet so let's just jump into our creature resource which I've, I've still got open where you can double click it there and scroll back up to conversation click the ellipsis and if you've uh, saved your your dialogue then you should be able to see it here. Now uh, it's not in a folder yet and I'll show you how to how to put things in folders because it's a good idea to put things in folders but I'll do that in a moment. Um, so he's ready to go let's uh, drop him in. Um, so in the creatures palette you should find your creature, click on him, and then click somewhere in the area. And if I just zoom in for you, um, we can see that he's been placed. There he is. Um, before we before we export those out, I'll just show you how you can uh, put resources into a single folder. I'm going to go to the All tab just because uh, I'm lazy and I want to do all three of these at the same time. Scroll down and you see these three resources that I've made. Um, I want to put them in a folder, but before I can do that I have to check them in. Now ordinarily they're checked out, that just means they've got a green tick by them and certain um, database things you can't do. Um, so I've checked those in using right click check in and now I'm going to right click and click properties with them all selected still. Now of course I can't change their name which would ordinary, uh, ordinarily be there because they've all got different names. Um, but I can change their folder all at once. So let's use um, video tutorial, um, tutorial as the name of my folder and then one more slash. If I click OK then they should uh, disappear. Yep, and there they are in a little folder. Nice and easy. The benefit of that is it just means that I can right click on that folder um, and in fact before I do that I'll, uh, I'll show you how to uh, hook up the starting area. So File, um, Manage Modules, uh, Properties on, on your selected module and here we can choose a starting area and a starting waypoint. So uh, click the ellipsis and in our folder start area which is the thing I named it and waypoint start which is the tag I gave to my waypoint click OK click close now we're ready to I'll try and remember to bring it back 
right click export export without dependent resources.